Hey guys, Human here, and this time I'm here with a BT11 tier list. This tier list does include the new ban list and the new mulligan rule. This ban list would be, in fact, affect the how the regional would come out. And we have three upcoming regionals with Carta Magica this weekend, and then Top Cut with Core two weeks later, I believe. But this is the ban list, and we did. I did take, in fact, of the results from the EU regional that happened recently as well. But here we have it: our ban list. For not our ban list, I'm sorry, our tier list. So starting with the first, we have Beastar. Beastar, personally, um, it hasn't really done much in results. It is still a good deck, however, um, but. It's still relatively slow compared to how our meta is. Because of how slow it is, it, it needs more control and becomes heavily reliant on the security. So unless your security has numerous bombs in there, numerous options to remove bodies or stopping attacks, it's not going to get you much further. So this is why I will have to put Beostar as a tier 2 of the tier list. I'm not sure where on tier 2 yet. But we're gonna start them at tier two. Next, we have Beelzemon. Recently, new support. We got a new deck, and it's been doing really well. It did major majority of the top cut for um, EU were Beelzemon decks. Actually, um, it's gotten extremely fast. Uh, it hits uh, it's constantly chipping damage with Itmon's. It's getting your trash filled, and you're able to warp into the new Star Deck Beelzebub that's able to get two checks as well as gaining memory, keeping turn, and being able to go to blast mode that's essentially digivolving for one and getting you another check. So it's super strong, has super fast, and it has security bombs as well with Death Slingers and um, Barrage. So this is why, with the results, with how fast it is, I will have to put the Beelzemon as a tier 1. Next, we have Blackwell Greymon. Yes, Blackwell Greymon did get hit. However, Blackwell Greymon is still a very, very strong deck. It's still heavily controlled and can do numerous things in the game. Uh, it's able to remove bodies. It's also able to OTK. If you want to build the Blackwell Greymon, in an OTK variant, you would be playing heavily on the promo. You'll play promo Blackwood Greymon um, from going up. However, what you're missing now is the cheap Digivolution from the Greymon X. But that is not necessarily the biggest thing. Yes, you need it, but it is not your game winner. It controls the deck for sure. But you're still able to go from your level 4 to your level 6 for I believe seven, yeah, seven uh, memory. Uh, in this case, all essentially is is two cool boys, one memory boost, and a memory t uh, tamer. That is very doable. It's still very doable. So maybe this would still be a contender. Um, however, at the same time, it becomes a lot slower because you're not going up the line as cheap anymore, and you won't. Most likely will not have enough memory to use a Zubacon Punch if you start playing Zubacon Punch in your deck. So this is why I'll have to put the Black World Greymon as a tier 1.5. It's not necessarily tier 2. It's still super good into other decks. But I don't think it's fast enough to handle with the very top tier decks anymore. Or the tier 1 decks in this case. So 1.5 is where it lands. Next, we have Bloom Lord. Bloom Lord essentially untouched still super strong but it does it is still weak to death xmon but a good player is able to play around it and knows when to go wide and when not to go wide uh it's still super strong in getting the otks getting your opponent's security down to zero and then going off for a win following turn or even even immediately if there's enough mem uh, memory or memory tamer for a hybrid so there are many players that is good with it. Um, we've seen numerous results uh, with it. In the limited meta, actually. In the 
limited color, mono color meta. Bloom Law has been doing super well. Um, however, we have to see it in the regionals where it has yet to really perform yet. However, because of its standings of being able to OTK and of course having a Hydra to deal with cross uh, bodies and be able to remove them, bottom decking the cross bodies so they do not get their uh, cross sources anymore, making it a a contender, a definitely a tournament contender where it's able to perform. Um, because it was untouched compared to Black World Greymon, I would have to rank it higher than Black World Greymon, um, but below Beelzemon as it's still slower than it. Beelzemon can uh, hit the Itmons and mill your Blastmos, removing bodies, and just do continuous chips, continuous, and doesn't let them uh, go off at all. So we'll have to put the Bloom Rod as a 1.5 as well, but above Black World Greymon. Now we have Commandermon. Commandermon, being a rookie, uh, rookie Rush type of deck, has always been around. Ever since it was introduced, Commandermon has always been around, stealing wins here and there, possibly even uh, doing really well. So it's not tier 3 necessarily. It's better than tier, I think, personally, I think it's better than tier 3, but it's not better than tier 2. So in this case, I'll have to put it in tier 2, most likely at the very bottom, or at the top of tier 3. That's where I'm seeing Commander Mon is right now, where it's still doing the same dance before, doing Ricky Rush chips, Commander on attack, Commander on attack. Hopefully, hopefully, you do get your Commander on to cycle a new Commander Mon, that way you're able to get more bodies continuous attack. So you can fill your trash and play a Dr. Mon for 3 and then get another rush in. And next we have Dark Knight Mon. Dark Knight Mon actually had uh, results in EU. Um, it's being able to pop tamers stops Cross a lot. And Cross is definitely a prominent deck where they're constantly and constantly doing well in both pre Banless and post banless, uh, it essentially wasn't touched at all. You can play the cross seven version where you're able to hit hard, or and have a big body, or you can have play the Merva version where you're rushing in for game. You don't hit as hard, but you're hitting much faster as you're swinging multiple bodies. They all have rush and they all have blocker. So even even if you're not swinging for game, you can always just play your Merva mod to get two extra bodies on board, and those bodies do get their on play effect. So your like cross threes or cross fours, they do get the on play effect to get you draw more cards or even search more cards as well. Um, but because of that, being Dark Diamond being able to play into that kind of matchup doesn't necessarily mean it's copium. It doesn't necessarily mean it's good enough to be tier two. It still loses to many, many matchups. Which is why it has, uh, I have to put it into a tier 3 despite the one result that we see. So it will be a tier 3 deck, but not tier 2. It most likely will be the very top of tier 3 that's borderlining tier 2. And next we have, uh, this for me is security control. Security control was died down a lot. It de The deck definitely died down a lot with the introduction of Black World Greymon. Black World Greymon being able to... Uh, remove all your tamers just says no you will never be able to use purple options anymore but but because black world greyman got hit it indirectly makes secure control better again so with secure control being better again and black world greyman being hit secure control is now a very good deck that can be both a tier 1.5 or tier 2 deck right on the edge of both tiers um, however though it is still a very slower, much slower deck compared to others, and can and will lose uh, faster matchups if they're able to rush through security. And security may not be your best friend here. It's very, very security dependent, and if you, there's nothing in security, that's it. You will more likely than not just lose your matchup no matter what you're going against. And even though Black Rogue Grimm got hit, like I said, it is not out. It can still be played. And you run into it, more likely than not, it's not going to be a fun time and it will not be a good matchup. Um, but the good thing about this though, the good thing about uh, security control, 
the introduction of Iron Marco in the new starter deck. Iron Marco, if you're playing it, you can always go from your level 5 to the Ophanimon. Your Magnamon to your Ophanimon. And because Ophani is, um, is considered a purple, you're now able to stack your security bomb to your security, uh, to the top of your deck, and then recover it to your security. Which is why I will have to put this security control in a tier 1.5, but below Black World Greymon. I do not think it is better than Black World Greymon, but it is higher than uh, tier 2 at the very least. Next, we have Dorbikmon. Dorbikmon has been showing a lot of results, both uh, monocolor and at Nats. Uh, it hasn't. It's just constantly do, do showing results as most decks now, if you're playing Dorbikmon, you're playing pure Dorbik. So you're playing it with blue, you're playing the uh, Majiramon, you're playing it with a lot of security attack plus bonus Digimons, you're playing it with Growlmon, so you keep your turn, you're playing your Gimons, and of course, you're playing Fireball, Air, uh, Air of Dragons, Hero from of the Sky. So you're constantly drawing cards, so you're Deck, your hand size will always be large, large enough so that you can play your Dorbikmon and keep t uh, and keep enough cards in your hand. And of course, you're playing cards like Hero, Memory Tamers, and give an extra 2,000 DP when you attack. That way, it's able to run over uh, securities or especially large securities that play cards like Omnimon. So or death or defects. So you gotta make sure they're big enough to run through. And once you get through the security. You have your rookie to swing in for a game, and you do play a delicate plan, so you don't have to worry about hitting into any options or any security bombs in this case, making Dorbikmon a pretty strong deck. But because of consistency and how long it takes to set up, it's not, to me personally, it is not a 1.5 deck, but it is not a tier 3 deck. It, to, it, to me, it is a tier 2 deck, but has very, very high potential but a very low floor. So it's a low floor, high ceiling deck where if you get the pieces, you're winning. If you don't get the pieces, you're just losing. And that's just how these OTK, OTK decks are. So to me, it will be a tier 2 deck above Commandra, but below Beastar, as Beastar is still essentially really good into a couple of the top tier decks, such as uh, Beelzemon. As Beelzebub does lose his security bombs, which Dorbikmon does not have, but Beelstar uh, does have. Now we have Exomon. Exomon was good. Don't get me wrong. Exomon it was very good, especially because it has a pretty good matchup into Black World Greymon. If the Black World Greymon player does not play, uh, does not have your set up properly, does not have a metal gray with a X antibody in the source properly. It's all they have to do is put a metal gray mon on board with a X antibody option underneath. They will threaten a Gaia Mon if they force an attack. Just keeping it on board is all it takes to threaten that potential hit. So they can never go into a X Mon if to force an attack. You have to be able to remove the Gaia Mon somehow or remove the body before Dealing with the rest of the, the raising area, so which is why Exomon isn't necessarily as good. It's good only for that specific matchup. Now, if you're gonna run Exomon into Beelzemon, they're like, sure, I don't mind. I'm attacking with my body anyway. I just want to mill. Or you have Exomon against Bloomlord. Sure, I have many bodies on board. You remove one, I'll remove another, and then I'm gonna go into a Hydromon and bottom deck the Exomon. So what happens to X1? They just leaves the board because they can't evade that. You can evade destruction, but you can't evade that. And of course, security control, you can't do anything about that. You just hit into the bomb and that's it. It's gone. So X1 isn't exact isn't as good anymore because black you see a lot less black world Greymon. So which is why X1, I'll have to put it into a tier two meta, but the top of tier two. Higher than Beelzemon Star. Only because it is still a very strong, very strong deck. You bring out a level 7 body that's very big and can control the board consistently. And of course, there's always the X amount OTK. We're able to swing multiple times, trashing uh, security, 
uh, because of your uh, inheritable. And of course, if your ice wall passed to one, you essentially says, well, that's it. I get to have another turn. So Exmon lands at tier two to me. Next, we have Gallimon. Gallimon, yes, they perform in the mono uh, meta, but it's not going to perform well into this um, banlist meta where it doesn't have your new Gallimon support yet. All you have is your current support. It has not changed, and it, it's too slow. It's just way too slow with how fast this meta is. Uh, you're able to get your pieces, sure. You're able to get your Takato, but like by the time you have to get your Takato out, get, by the time you're able to get your Gallimon, you're probably down to one, maybe two security at most. And and then what? Can you OTK then? If you're able to OTK from that point, yes, it's great. You just need the perfect hand. But you're very unlikely to set up that OTK by then. And even if you do set up, Let's say if you set up against uh, a deck like Mastermon or even uh, Melga, they're able to remove... Melga just kills you, honestly. Melga just kills you. You can't really do much about it. But Mastermon, you need to hit, uh, remo- get their security big enough so you can trash the security. And if you don't get it big enough, Mastermon has very, very large bodies that can be in security. Those bodies can remove the Gallimon. Or it can be security bombs that can remove the Gallimon. And of course, you have uh, Blue. Gallimon is good into Blue. That's good. That's fine. But then, is it good into Black or Greymon? Not necessarily. Is it good into Security Control? Kinda, yes. Yeah, I would say yes, but because it's a slower deck. But if you go against Beos, it's probably going to lose because of the matchup and how fast Beos, uh, Beos is. Is if you go against Crossheart, same thing. Crossheart is super fast. All you do is rookie rush you down, essentially, and then go into a cross, and then cross to rush for game. So, Beelzeman does will be struggling a lot into this meta. I would personally put it into a tier 2. However, above Commandermon, under Dorbic, because Dorbic OTK has a lot more potential compared to Gallimon X, or at least Gallimon in this case, uh, personally, for me. So we you put Gallimon into a tier 2 under Dorbeg above Commandermon. Now we have Grandis next. Grandis was played a lot primarily because of Black World Greymon being around. With more and more Black World Greymon players, you expect to see more and more Grandis players. Because Grandis is what makes Black World Greymon scared. Grandis is really good into Black World Greymon as it's able to attack over it, pierce it, and deal with the entire board. You just can't... De- Black World Greymon struggles really hard into Grandis unless they see the BT5 Animon X antibody to stop attacks. If you don't see that, more likely than not, Black World Greymon is going to uh, lose and Grandis will take the win. Uh, however, Grandis, just like all the other um, metas, all the other sets, it's still very Stack dependent. You need to see your stack and then being able to OTK. You will more likely not never OTK on the first stack and always take the second stack to swing for game or take out all the security on the first stack but unable to get the last hit for the win. And if your opponent is able to clap back, then that's it. Uh, they clear board and they set up uh, to win the following uh, follow up and getting say, whether setting up blockers, recovery, or even. Possibly even just winning right after. So, Grandis. Personally, I will have to put Grandis up in 1.5. But below Black World Greymon and below Security Control. Uh, it's, it's very weak into Security Control. It, like I, uh, it loses Security Bombs. It doesn't have cards like Delga Plan unless you play the Red Package. But there's no reason to play the Red Package when... You prefer consistency. You want consistency in Grandis so you can get all your pieces to get your level 5s, get your level 6, get your force, anything you need so you can get the full line to get through all your opponent's security. In that case, you run Davis. You play the blue package with possibly even Mega Death so you have an out, you have a security bomb. So Grandis, to me, it will land in 1.5 here below security control uh, and below Black or Grey Month. It is, to me, above the Tier 2 list. And, of course, we have Imperial German. Purple. Red, purple, Imperial German. 
it's copium. To me, it's copium. It's just if you have the full line, you win. If you don't have the full line, you lose. It's very very high roll. It's de- very dependent on what's in your trash and what your hand is. If you don't have it, that's it. It's way too slow, and either that or it's way too fast. And so I'm just gonna leave it here for the copium. If you're coping and enjoying the game, play this, because that's what I would do. Just play it and have fun. If you want to play wherever you want to have fun, like it, you don't even have to play. You can play anything that you enjoy. And to me, it lands right into the copium meta. And uh, now blue green imperial, it's slightly better. But not that much better compared to red purple. Uh, but to me, it's more playable than red purple as it's capable of OTK and just doing damage. So I have to put it into a tier three at the very least. But it's not better than Dark Knight Mon X into the current meta at the very least. Into the current meta, it's just not better as all you can do is attack with X Mon. Yes, yes, jamming, but it doesn't have uh, security protection from options and options is very heavy now in the current meta and of course you have you can go into your pale dramon to bottom deck something and tw- two times more with uh, jamming but same thing doesn't have security protection it will die to security bombs so that's why it just lands right here into tier 3 but not copium but somewhat it's right there on the borderline it's both copium and tier 3 and Jessmon, you're coping as well. It's good. It's definitely good. But, okay, you set up your board. You're going wide. You're going to Jessmon. Now your opponent's security is down to zero. What now? You can't finish them off. And now you have, all they have to do is wipe the board. And that's it. It's very easy to do with how our meta is right now to wiping board. You have cross sevens. You have uh, Murva Rush. Uh, unless they, they have an out, that they can't do anything about it. Because it's probably rested. If it's not rested, it's rebooted because of the sister mod. But if it's rebooted, you might not even have the blocker. There's so much dependency on which sister mods you have in order to keep yourself alive. And it takes so long to set up. Just Just because you might be able to have it on the very first stack... And if you do, you're passing maybe 7, 8 memory. And that's a lot for your opponent to work with early game. And if they're or possibly even hit into security bomb, like I said earlier, we're just constantly talking about it. It's very de- heavily. This meta right now, there are a lot of kill options. Rivals Barrage. You have Death Slinger. You have Chaos Degradation. You have Flame Hellsight. Okay, Flame Hellsight doesn't really hurt them because they have Ganku X. You have Kakadius Breath, Gank, same thing, Kangu X, it doesn't really do anything, more. but everything else, everything else can remove it. So, it's just not fast enough to me uh, for it to be relevant. However, maybe in the future, when the World Knight set comes out, it might become relevant again. So, hold on to them. For now, if you're coping, have some fun, play Jessmon, play your bodies, go wide, and then swing. Now, Machine Dramon, fan favorite. I personally have not played much Machine Dramon, but I did watch Machine Dramon go into action, and it's honestly pretty scary. Like, being able to pop a uh, little Machine Dramon out, having Analog Man, and biggest, like, the biggest fear of Machine Dramon was actually Black World Greymon. Being, Black World Greymon to, being able to remove their body, being able to and then, of course, being able to remove their analog man doesn't allow Machine Dramon to play the game they want to play. And it's very costly to play the Machine Dramon as well, or even Chaos Dramon. So at that point, it's, Machine Dramon doesn't really feel as good. But it's very good into all the Tier 2 decks. <laughs> it just beats them all down, essentially. Uh, to me, which is why, even though it's not as good compared to some, it's good enough so that I can say, okay, people can play this competitively and still win because it's good enough. So to me, Machine Mon is a 1.5 deck, but not better than Black World Greymon, but it is better than Skill Control. 
it's much faster than security control, in my, uh, my opinion, as it's actually able to get swings in and hit opponents' bot, uh, security. And they have blockers and redirect. Of course, it's good. That's why I will have to put this in tier 1.5. And don't forget, because you're playing Machine Run, you play, because you're playing Chaos Shaman, it is red and black. That means Dex can and will play a Ragnamon to burn security and blitz in for a game. That's very possible as well. Don't forget about that card. That card is a real menace. And we've seen it with Black or Greymon with um, Dorbikmon. Being red and black, joggers into a Ragnalormon, uh, and Ragnalorm would be able to burn security and blitz for game. Next, we have armor. Armor rush. Armor rush, same, same thing as Imperial. Fan favorite, it's good, but it's not fast enough. You're only doing one check at a time. Even if you're playing um, Fire Rocket, so what? It does only two hits. With one digit one, that's not enough. You're not doing. You're not going fast enough to deal with it. Your opponent will be able to remove your body very fast and be able to remove your security. You have security bomb, sure, but is that security bomb enough? Uh, you need your tamers, sure, but you need to play those tamers though. But being able to play the tamers, you're not playing your Digimon. You're not rushing in for a game. You're taking too long to finish your opponent off, and. Now we, with Bloom Lore playing Hydra or like uh, Death Slinger, Degrade, Hell Sight, and all those other cards, Magnumon just get Mana X just gets removed instantly. It's played, so it doesn't have enough pressure that it once did a while back. So this I have to put in tier three above or below. It's right here. It's right here, right be below or above the Imperial. Uh, I like it more, so I'm going to put it above Imperial. I'm sorry, Dan. I had to put it above Imperial. And now we have Mastimon. One of my favorite decks. And to me, it's also one of the strongest decks for this specific meta. For this specific meta, without Black or Grey Mon being as prominent anymore. And that was its biggest weakness. Its biggest weakness was Black or Grey Mon, or War Grey Mon, uh, in this case. But less people play War Greymon, more people play Black War Greymon. And Black War Greymon being able to remove me rays, being able to haste force me rays, not giving you a chance to do anything, says, okay, you pretty much can't play the game at all. But because Black War Greymon got hit, you're seeing less of those, Master One now bumps up in tier. It was just like a tier 2 or tier 1.5 deck. Now, because of the ban list and the hit, and because of the new Mulligan. Master One loves Morgan because they play so little rookie. Being able to find their rookie, being able to find their TK, being able to find their Mirai just makes the deck so much better. Uh, because of the new Morgan and the new uh, Bearless, I personally have to put it into a tier one. Um, yes, it's good into Beelzemon. It's actually super good into Beelzemon, and Master One more likely than not will win that matchup. But overall matchup, though, overall, with all the different decks around, Beelzemon does still rank higher due to pacing and how it's able to play their game. A master one's very, very heavily based on control. If you can control the board, you control the game. But you're unable to control the board, you're not controlling the game. And of course, ever since BT9, this deck has been around and continuously, continuously putting effort and putting out results. And now that Black World Greymon, its biggest weakness is it is got hit. Uh, Greymon X getting hit. Not having to worry about passing uh be, getting clapped back, OTK'd or even um having all your Davis or Kubas removed as much anymore. It's now a tier one deck again. It's back into tier one. Goes right back up here into tier one. Uh, it still does struggle into some matchups, of course. You can never forget about it. It does struggle into um, the Beelzemon matchup, actually. Beelzemon is actually really good into Melga only because it plays Death Stinger and Rivals Brush. I am a broken record as I repeated that over and over and over again. But it lands right here into tier one. 
Very fast deck. OTAs again and again and again. Um, biggest struggle, Black or Greymon. You're not now seeing it much less. You're okay with it. Now it's back straight back into tier 1. Still fast deck. Now we're going to Merva. Merva, you have many, many different iterations of it. You have Minerva with Mervamon being able to spawn a lot of bodies out or ha removing your Mer uh, Minerva to bring out a Mervamon yourself or having a Minerva attack into something, retaliation, and then bring a Mervamon out. It, there's so many different iterations of it. And of course, you have the retaliation iteration of it that is actually on my channel. Uh, the one I played at Nats, you have that version which is closer to a Merva loop, being able to play Mervamon and then rush for a game with multiple bodies. Um, of course, being able to uh, abuse the Cerberusmon and Wervmo package along with Lilithmon so you can get your big pieces, get your rush in, and get your uh, trash filled. It just, and of course, you have the Crossheart version of Merva. Crossheart version of Merva, I talked about it briefly earlier. It just lots, lots, and lots of memory gain with Gravity Crush and Blinding Rays. Just play them, play the Merva for 7 or 8, whatever amount you want to do it for to Digicross, and then swing 3 bodies right there. That's 3 hits right there into security. That's 3. Uh, and by the time you get to that point, you probably chipped like two, uh, 1, 2, maybe even 3 hits already, and that's just game. Uh, uh, that's all Crosshair does. It just rushes in. So, Mervamon having so many different iterations of the deck and so many different ways to play it. It's one way is better into another, another is better than another. And of course, the Minerva Merva version is very, very good into Crosshair as you're able to flow um, bodies. You just flow uh, Psychmon. You flow. Um, Gazimons, they can't do much about them because even if they play a Derulu to remove any of them, it comes right back because Minerva brings them back. So they can never, never play them for cheap. So that's why this version right here, Merva, because of so many different iterations of the deck, I had to put it into a 1.5. But at the very top of 1.5, at its borderlining, touching our tier 1 as well because of all the matchup it's good against. And course we have blue flare blue flare capable of otking and of course not being hit by the balance at all uh don't it hasn't really done too much but it's doing a lot now since it's doing a lot now uh it's capable of doing a lot now actually let's put this uh blue flare into uh placing like where should we place it blue flare on paper, it's good into Bloom Lore. On paper, it's good into Mastermon. On paper, it's good into Skill Control. It's very good into Skill Control, actually. And of course, on paper, it's also good into Merva because they, they just get stunned. You play Merva, that's three bodies. All three bodies will get stunned by the Metal Greymon. So, Metal, so Blue Flare being able to play into every single one of those matchups and be able to do well into them, essentially. Uh, even against Beelzemon, it's actually pretty good against Beelzemon as well because you do play cards like Madoki to stop memory gain and you do play Sorai and Beelzemon does, the, uh, is usually warping into a Beelzemon from an Entmon so once you hit the Sorai, you don't have to worry about it it's not going to be able to attack, you have to Digivolve again to attack so you be able to need those bodies, you can prevent them with the Metal Greymon, with the Sorai. And there are times where you you need to have a Beelstarmon. You play the new Beelstarmon from the starter deck. And then middle card so you can get an Ipmon with Rush. Even though he has Rush, if you have a Sorai out, if you use the Sorai turn before, it can't do anything and just stuns it. So it's, it will struggle. It will be pretty good into it, but because of the speed of the deck, um, because of how fast other decks are, I have to put it into a 1.5 tier. Uh, below Bloom Lore, as even though on paper it's good against Bloom Lore, Bloom Lore wants if they're able to establish a Hydromon along with a um, Cherrymon, they can't get through those bodies ever. It's very tough. Next, we have Mother D Reaper. D 
the Reaper is never gone. It's still alive. And ultimately, the worst matchup is just Black or Greymon. But or other than that, it's pretty good against everything else. Um, but the speed, speed of the deck, very important. Speed of the deck is just not enough. It struggles against many uh, of the other decks. Uh, it gets stunned by uh, Metal Greymon, but it gets stunned by Blue Flare. So even though you're playing your, your Chump uh, Reapers, they're not able to swing for a hit. And of course, you're turning on the Sora and Joe for them to get the extra memory for them to do a bigger play. Uh, Bloom Lord, they just bottom deck your little guys. They just set up your uh, set up Cherrymon, set up uh, the Hydra. Now they don't have to worry about uh, Reaper swinging for game. They can't because they can't. Reaper won't be able to swing for game, and then all Hydra does is all right. Now deal with this Hydra, and even if you have your ga uh, gatekeepers, your Bloom Lords are swinging for multiple checks. They're able to get through the gatekeeper. Um, builds one just way too fast. It just rips right through your security before they're able to set up a gatekeeper um, with six or more sources. Mastermind does play Psychmon and they just sit on the Psychmon. They can't do anything about it. Uh, and then they can always degrade. Chaos Degradation is a real card. They can degra Degradation the Reaper if they try it for the Reaper play or Degradation the Gatekeeper and then swing it for a security that way. Melga same as before, nothing changed between those two matchups. Uh, if Melga has the full stack, that's it. They can swing through everything. So, Reaper is just not that good into those decks. So, because of that, it because of it losing to so many different matchups, I can't put it any higher in Tier 2. And with that, in that case, I had to put it right in the middle of Tier 2, above Gallimon at the very least, but below Thorbigmon, because Thorbigmon can OTK the deck very, very fast. Now we have Ofani. Ofani to me here is Ofani Loop. So I talked about it earlier uh, with a security control. Ofani Loop having the introduction of Ayamako. With the introduction of Iron Marco, Ofani Loop is now able to stack their security and know what's there. So Ofani Loop makes it very less, a lot less RNG heavy, but and then a lot more favorable as it's very consistent. It's able to keep itself afloat, able to keep its security high, while continu continuously do chip damage to your opponent. Which is why Ofani to me is in a tier 1.5 meta here. It makes it really good into decks like Grandness, of course, like I said, because of stacking of security. Um, it is faster than security control, but it doesn't necessarily beat that. Even though it's faster, um, it does mean it can do more damage. It's able to chip more, have a more consistent push. It becomes a lot less security reliant. And even like, even though it's good, it's good. It doesn't deal with Yuya in Black or Greymon. Uh, you get your sources stripped by uh, Blue Flare. Uh, you get rip, your, you get your secure ripped through by Bloom Lord or even bottom deck. Your Ofani might get bottom deck by Hydra. It, it struggles into everything, uh, into a lot of the other decks. But it's really good into uh, decks that doesn't have that protection, doesn't have that security protection um, as well. Which is why Ofani here, I have to slot it into a tier 1.5 but not at the not very high, like right in the middle of tier one point five, like low middle, below Machine German, but above the security control. It, Grandis to me, it's still it just stays here at the very bottom as one point five. It's very dependent on how your opponent's security is and whether you see the line or not. So that's why it just stays there. Next we have Crossheart. Crossheart continuously putting out results both at Nats, at Worlds, and even at the most recent regional uh, where it won. So Crossheart here, to me, it's a solid, solid Tier 1. But where in Tier 1 would it land? Um, with the results it's been having, it's with the de uh, what it's been doing, having the Merva version and you have the Cross 7 version, I think it's a solid Tier 1 like best deck right now. It's better than... Uh, Bios, it's better than Mastermon, and it's better than um, 
Melga. So it's a solid, very top of the line uh, best deck for now. But until the, it's solved, this meta is solved, we have around three and a half weeks of this meta, essentially. We have until um, BT12 comes out where it changes. It becomes a hunter deck instead. But right now, for this meta, BT11 with ban lists, I do believe Crossheart is the best deck in this format. And next we have O-Force. O-Force, same thing as before. It's very tamer reliant, whether you have all your tamer or not. And of course, a lot of players prefer seeing the security attack starter deck, uh, Arrow Vigilmon, because that is your OTK Arrow Vigilmon. If you have the security attack, you're able to rip through your opponent's security very, very fast. However, the negative thing about it is it's relatively weak o force is relatively weak it's only at 12,000 and that 12,000 can die to a lot of security bombs or a lot of uh, high DP Digimon and in this meta there's a lot of high DP Digimon you have Stardeck Beelzemon that's 12k you have Blastmos that's 12k Mastemon 13k you have uh, Ofani 12k Ordeen 15k uh, Dexmon 15k Merva 12k, Hydra 13k, Bloomnor 12k, Black World Greymon 12k. I can keep on going on and on and on. That Old Force struggles very hard because of those 12k's and above uh, DP Digimon. Now, yes, you can have your tie for the extra DP. Yes, you can have the Rena for the extra DP. But by the time you get those, you probably don't have um, eight or more cards in your hand anymore. You have to set up really fast. You have to set up early. And it's very, very, very stack dependent. So unless you have those stacks, unless you're able to keep turn just, uh, after making those stacks, that O Force is not going to do too much. So O Force to me in this meta, it's a tier, very solid tier two. As it's still able to okay, it's still pretty consistent if you have the new BT11 uh, Arrow Vision want to search for more tamers so you can unsuspend your O Force more. And most recently, we did have. Um, a winner in a local playing O Force. So that's why O Force right, to me is a solid tier two. But is it above Dorbic? Is it below Dorbic? Is it below uh, Mother? I think it's right in between. Right in smack middle of tier two, right here. Middle of tier two, O Force. Now we have Venus Mon here representing Yellow Hybrid. Yellow Hybrid, just like Ofani Loop. But you don't you don't play the uh, Ayamako, but you're able to continuously set up your hybrids and swing with your hybrids. You're constantly able to recover it, and then you stun. The stunning is the most important factor of Venus here. Being able to stun your opponent from getting their when Digivolve effect means a lot. And if they don't have their when Digivolve effect, you don't have to worry about um, Beelzebub keeping turn to mill cards, or you don't have to worry about... Uh, Mastermind bringing a body. You don't have to worry about um, Melga being able to unsuspend. So it's a very solid deck into some of the top decks, but it does it still does struggle every now and then. It doesn't have enough push. It's not that fast, but it's able to set up tamers fast enough because of cards like Rise Greymon. So and be able to swing motor checks with Rise Greymon, but and then it's able to remove uh, bodies. It's just not enough because your security is all tamers your your opponent is not scared of your security at that point like, all right i'm just gonna go into your tamers sure you can have your tamers you can have all that set up but then what are you gonna do it's the early game for yellow hybrid is relatively slow you need to get to the mid and late game to really capitalize on what yellow hybrid does best which is memory manipulation at the end and being able to with using your tks use your tk cards using your uh tie and cards getting those extra memories getting your hybrids in so that you have you go hybrid attack hybrid attack just constantly go hybrid for game essentially so but it is very good at board control with cards like Rapid Mod and Venus Mod and Rise Green Mod X. That's the very po uh, good thing about it. So it's very positive for that. Well, for that, I would have to put it into a... I think it's better than Tier 2. It might actually be in Tier 2. But because of me, I, I do like the deck and I do see it perform recently. I want to put it at...
the low middle of 1.5, right around here where it's below Machine Drummond, but above Ofani. It might even be below Ofani. It like these three, right? These three spots right here: Ofani, uh, Yellow Hybrid, and Skill Control. I think that they're all interchangeable. Or uh, actually, more like the entire bottom slot right here. They're all interchangeable. All four. Uh, all the base. All the base on how the meta looks and what you want to play against. And uh, next, our very last deck that we have to showcase under tier list is War Greymon. War Greymon, just like before, it has not changed. It's see your full stack, go into security, you have protection, you're high DP, get your memory back, and then go into Omni, Omni X for game. It it has not changed. The deck has not changed at all ever since um, they made it, essentially. They made uh, Omni X. So it's just a very solid tier 2 um, in the entire meta. Uh, even going against uh cards with blockers, unless they are piercing, they have to worry about it, and then it's, and then that, that that's it. It just passes turn afterwards. Uh, against decks like uh that have security bombs, if you have protection, you're fine. You can protect it. That means two sources, and you losing two sources here may or may not turn off the tie, so you don't get as many security checks anymore. So end up being not being able to OTK, and then having your opponent clap back. That is essentially the deck. It doesn't do enough into the meta which is why it's a solid tier 2 um, but it's still better than Manager 1 it's right around here where Gallimon and World Greymon are interchangeable uh, but I did put it under Gallimon I do believe Gallimon is still better it's still the better deck for the meta if you decide to play Gallimon instead of World Greymon so there you have it this is my tier list we have Crossheart Biozimon, Mastimon, and Melga at tier 1. Tier 1.5, we have Merva, many different iterations of Mervamon, Bloomlore, Metal Greymon, Black World Greymon, Machine Dramon, Yellow Hybrid, Ofani Loop, Security Control, and Grandis in the 1.5. That was a mouthful. And tier 2, uh, we have Examon, Biostar, Dorbikmon, Old Forest, Mother D Reaper, um, Gallantmon, War Greymon, and Commandermon in tier 2. Tier 3, we have Dark Knightmon, Armor Rush, and Blue Green Imperial Dramon. Of course, the Copium. We always gotta have someone coping, right? We have Red Purple uh, Imperial Dramon, and then we have Jessmon in there. But there you have it. This is my tier list. Now, now, previously in my other video, I did say I was gonna have a giveaway. So we will now have our giveaway here, as you can see it in the tab on top, where I did put input everyone's name that did make a comment. And here we uh, of course comment of what I requested. Not just any comment. So here we go. We have everyone's name here. I will spin this wheel five times, alright? On the fifth time, what it lands on is the winner. So the first one will not count, second one will not count, third will not count. Fourth will not count. Only the fifth, right? Only the fifth uh, spin will count here. So here's the first one. I am sorry for whoever this lands on, but only the fifth one will count. The very first land, Bangdoda man. I am sorry, but I will not remove you. Of course, you still you're still here. It only counts the fifth. Second ro uh, spin right here. Let's see what we got. We got Necro Glacial. I'm sorry. He's not win yet. You might it might still land on your name. Third spin. We got Red. Whew. Alright. Fourth spin. Next spin after this one. Next spin is the real spin. And that would be our winner. Our fourth spin is Chris. And then last and final spin. This will determine the winner of the giveaway. And we have Arc Light. Arc Light is our winner. So Arc Light, uh, I will be obviously commenting on your comment as well. Um I do need I do need you to message me. Uh 
your information so then I can give you your uh, send the map your way and which map you want. So we will be talking about that uh, shortly. All right, so here we go. Our winner is Arclight. And in the future, I may or may not have more giveaways. So stay tuned for them. Uh, I do hope you like this uh, uh, tier list. And it will help you in the choosing what deck you want to play for the upcoming regional, hopefully. And maybe you'll do well. I do hope to see people doing well. So see you next time.